Good afternoon, good evening. Today is April 13, 2021. Welcome to the Julie and Milo show. My name is Julie. I'm coming to you from Orange County, California. My dear friend, Milo. Milo, could you please say hello? Hey, how are you guys doing? It's Milo from Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Milo. Oh, bless. This is something that you and I are so blessed to be here. It is because of on passive. Well, how you and I are feeling every single day, we get to sit together, we get to talk about on passive. On passive is an artificial uh, intelligent information technology company. Um, it is the reason for the Julie and Milo show was born on December 4th. We get to sit down and interview founders across the world. Uh, today, in our holding room, we have a special lady who's coming from Papua New Guinea. Milo, could you please help me to introduce our guest, please? Absolutely, Julie. And we are, man, we're thrilled every time we get to talk to someone from Papua New Guinea. And today we have uh, a founder uh, that has come to us, and we don't know a lot about her, but we've read her bio, and uh, we're excited about talking to her. So I'm going to bring her out right now, Johanna Colombe. Hey, Johanna, so good to have you on the show today. Hello, Johanna, it's so good to have you. Thank you for taking time to be here with us. Thank you so much, Jilly, and thank you, Milo, for the warm welcome. Thank you. So honored to be here. Absolutely. Well, Johanna, what we like to do, we like to talk to the founders, and we like to get to know them a little bit better. And so that's what we're going to do today. So we want to start all the way back at the beginning. Where were you born, your parents, uh, your siblings, and your family now? Good. Um, I was born in Port Moresby. Uh, Port Moresby is the capital of Papua New Guinea. Um, my mom and dad, my dad was a, a taxi driver in the big city. Uh, he moved to Lay early 80s and started his own company. So uh, basically moved over to the second largest city in Papua New Guinea, not as big as America, um, and grew up in Lake City. Uh, I had two brothers, only girl with two brothers. Um, I lost one of my brothers a few years back through a stabbing incident in our village. So now I only have one brother. Uh, I am married to a wonderful man by the name of Paul Kilembe, and we have six children, um, three boys and three girls. Oh, and as is it is in uh, Papua New Guinea culture where um, we look after so many more. So I like to think I have 12 children because I've looked after so many in the past that come and go. And I have two boys with me currently. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Johanna. That is so beautiful of what your story you, that you share. And I'm sorry uh, for your loss of your brother. Um, but it seems like you have a wonderful family. For my law and I get to know the people in Papua New Guinea. I know that the people in Papua New Guinea have such big hearts and such a powerful and loving energy. I know that you are um, a teacher. So tell me, what is, it's so rewarding to be a teacher. So tell me a little bit about um, your experience being a teacher. Yes, um, I've been a teacher since forever. This means that um, I transferred to a school in 1984 and took on a Christian curriculum. And 
the amazing thing was because it was individualized learning, I graduated four years. So I was about 17, 18 when I graduated high school. Um, and and I, I like to tell people that when I started there in 84, I never really left because I um, thereafter used the curriculum a few years later to teach my children, uh, went on to uh, teach others. I was a teacher um, of the high schoolers and then became an administrator and a principal um, using the accelerated Christian education curriculum. Um, yes, so I've just loved how the curriculum um, helps children to read. Um, we have children who are four years old. In Papua New Guinea, most children go to school when they're eight or nine, ten. Um, but using the curriculum, uh, I'm able to bring in children at three and a half and four year olds, getting them to read in three to six months in English, speaking English as well. Uh, that has been a, a, a blessing to me. Um, it, it's tedious, teaching is hard work. Um, a lot of times we're underpaid in Papua New Guinea, um, but just seeing the miracle of a child being illuminated in education is something that, it, for me, it's rewarding. I would do it over and over again just for that result. Yeah, so, so I'm just blessed that I'm able to teach. Wow, it is. It is actually a really um, blessing and a rewarding to be a teacher and see the child growing from, you know, I'm actually uh, studying being a teacher myself. So I do resonate with you, although I don't teach as long as you did, but I did involve with uh, the children and absolutely you see the grow in the child is huge. So I like uh, to talk about, um, you know, you love to driving long distance in the dirt bike and what's, what is wet crossing? Wet crossing, wet crossing is actually when you have a bridge that is out and, and you have to cross the riverbed and sometimes you've got rocks coming down really fast and just maneuvering um, a vehicle. So I, I like to, uh, it's, it's a scary moment when you're going into a river, you don't know. Um, it, it's like you turn into a sob halfway because the river's coming down really fast. And then it, um, there's, a, there's like a big pool in front of you and a splash. And usually in Papua New Guinea, when there's a flood and there's vehicles that are lined on both sides of the, um, Bridge, bridge that's washed away, you actually have a large audience. And um, especially when you, as a woman, when you're crossing a wet, doing a wet crossing, everyone's um, watching out to see this woman that fails. But when I get to the other side, there's all these nod of approval and all the guys giving the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But, so you, you can do wet crossing, but you need to do it in a big, steady vehicle, a big wheeler, and that's heavy to cross. So, um, yes, and I, I love driving. Uh, it's just a thrill. <laughs> Adventurous, yeah. In, in America, a lot of times I, I've watched them and they call them sippy holes, where they actually do that. They fill, the, fill it in with mud and stuff, and then them trucks will go down in there and they'll try to get out and stuff. And like you said, there's a big crowd there watching and, and stuff, but, but it's more of a sport of a thing over here, you know. But uh, that's really neat. I was actually going to ask you about that, uh, but I that wasn't that wasn't my next. I was going to make sure I got this question in too, because anytime, <laughs> anytime I see music on the bio, that's where I'm going. So tell me a little about your music. What do you like? Do you sing? Do you play? Uh, what is it about music? Uh, after I graduated, I did about six months um, off music in college. Um, and, and then I, I didn't continue because I had to come back and support my mom and dad in their small uh, taxi business. Um, but music has always been a part of me, uh, just picking up the guitar and playing and singing or bouncing off on a 
piano someplace. Um, uh, and so I started reading music and then, and then I let it rest. When I got married, my, my husband and I were music directors in church. And in Papua New Guinea, it's mostly playing by ear. So yeah, I did that for 10 years, playing by ear. <laughs> um, and then um, I helped a young man to start a music school. And I thought, mm, now I'm gonna start and go back and learn to read music. So at this stage, um, we started a school here in Ley. And due to COVID last year, we had to close doors. So. Uh, I found myself having um, two really good pianos, uh, three violin, four guitars, a bass guitar, la di da. And I thought, well, I can't let this go to waste. Might as well start to teach music. So um, I'm doing beginner for all, all the music except um, drums. So I'm, I'm doing um, teaching beginning music for guitar, um, bass, guitar, piano or keyboard and violin. Uh, and then I leave the drums to my son. Uh, just my eardrums get a bit of, uh, too much of a beating. <laughs> so is your guitar real close there? I can pick it up, but I don't think I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to sing for us? Oh. What if, oh, what, if what if she we're gonna have her prepare for it and then we'll bring her on in one of those uh, live webinars that we do like a Saturday fireside chat uh, yeah. or even the Wednesday night we would love for her to contribute it. What do you think about that, Joanna? Julie, you are a lifesaver right <laughs> I was Joanna, I'm always thinking that you're like this adventurous woman that just likes that. And I'm, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to give her the platform where she can grab her guitar and spell out that tune for us. I, I understand. Oh, I love it. Believe man, me. Man, I, I would have I set your stage on fire, but <laughs> I love I it. Would, I would love, love it if you do it. If you do it, you know. Um, because I know in, in on passive, which is the next topic that I'm going in, there are so many music lovers and Milo is one of a particular man. Every time when any guest coming on that has music as what they love in bio, Milo just love it. He couldn't sit still, you know? <laughs> so I would love it. Right. I would love it for you to come back on the Saturday and then just take your time and just fire up. <laughs> thank okay. you. That would be a lot, a lot of good practice time in between, but thank you. I'd love to do that. <laughs> We're going to uh, wait for it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It's coming. It's That's coming. <laughs> so I like to go into the topic of on passive. I know we love on passive, especially the people in Papua New Guinea. And I know that you do work with a group of women, try to get them into on passive. I like to find out from you, how did you heard about on passive? When did you join? And uh, why did you take the action to become an on passive founder and you are passionate about it? Thank you, Julie. I heard about on passive, um, I guess as soon as David Bacal um, came on, he started sending links out. So I got a link, um, I asked about it and he gave some information um, but I'm a careful person. So I, I sat on it for maybe six months or oh, maybe six to eight months. Um, and during, during that period, um, I researched the company, sat in on a few meetings. Um, the two things that um, got to me that um, helped convince me was number one, um, the founder, our founder, Ash Mufur, how genuine he is. 
um, just having him come on the webinars and, and just his heart. You, when someone gets on and is talking really uh, for, a, for a long period, you just can't help but um, read his heart. And I saw that he was genuine, that he was for the people. Um, he wanted to give a hand up to those around him. And if he could do that globally, he was going that, that direction. Um, I was blessed to see that he was also a very strong, committed family person. Um, and he, he works hard. He has everyone's interest at heart. And he doesn't, um, for those who give too many excuses, you know, he, he's just right on their, their tail and saying, you know, enough. I know where I'm going. You're either in it or not. I like that about him. So number one, the owner. Number two is the product. And um, knowing that the internet has a long lifetime and um, I'm a bit of an old school that had to get used to all the technology. And, and so understanding what he was doing and where he was going and, and um, knowing that not only does the internet have a long lifetime, but this is one person that is giving anyone, not just a hand up, just for a short uh, two, two second fame. He's in it for the long haul and anyone who comes on board, um, you are going to be blessed. You are going to um, live different. Um, and as an educationist, I, I reach out to people and, and sometimes I wear my heart on, the, on my sleeve by promising them a school right in the rural area and my husband thinks I'm crazy, but he's, we've been married 32 years, but, and seeing that he supported me to walk distances just to give education to kids. Um, and just seeing the possibility um, of on passive and how I could learn um, to deliver my programs uh, virtually using, using on passive, that, Look, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm coming into this with um, and doing it afraid, not knowing technology, but trusting and knowing that the founder has me. I have a good support of um, the inner circle, which is the GoFounder family, and that I'll be able to learn how to improve what I've been doing for so many years and doing it a bit more easier from the comfort of my home. So that kind of sold me to it and and like I said because I'm a careful person it's taken me a while to get active um, but hey now this giant is aroused I'm I'm talking to anyone and everyone about on passive so that, that's my short story in a nutshell oh, thank you awesome I love it I love I love your passion I love your heart okay and <clears throat> We like to say on the show that uh, on passive is changing the world one person at a time. And it started with Ash Mafaro, you know, and it's so true. It started with Ash Mafaro and it moves right on down and now it's down to you and me. And, uh, you know, but when we first come into the company, it seems like that most of us come in with the idea that, uh, you know, okay, it's going to be an extra income for us. It's something that we can do. And then all of a sudden we get in there and, and we start listening to Ash and our heart and our mind actually connect together. And all of a sudden, it's not about us no more. It's about what else we can do for humanity, what we can do for others, you know, not, not discounting the fact that we can do for ourselves. We're going to have time, freedom. We're going to have abundant living. So it's a two-part question here. What are you going to do? What are your dreams for you and your immediate family? What are those dreams that you're going to take care of first? And then when you get those taken care of, then what are you going to do with those extra apples that you have? Uh, so let's go with those two questions. Thank you, Milo. Um, my dream is to give my children, my my family a, a better future. Um, I, I have six children, so it's been, uh, supporting them to college has been a, a challenge. Um, so we concentrate on a few children at a time. So we have the first two that 
have graduated and gotten a degree and the other four are in waiting. Um, our youngest is in university. So I'd like to get the boys off to college and um, I've been asking them to think outside hustle to support them so that they, have, they are not just working a day job, but they, they're doing something else um, to support their income. And um, yeah, so I'd like to help them get on their feet. Uh, and the other thing for, for my family is just my husband has, he's an economist and he's been able to carry us this far. Um, I resigned as principal about seven years ago and I'm, I'm working on my own school on uh, personal tutoring children personally um, with academic apart from the music. Uh, and so I'd really like to um, help him. Um, we have a loan on our property uh, and just the finance side, just help him with the finance so you get to a place where um, he can breathe easy. That's the main thing for me. Um, yes, and then uh, he has an in interest in uh, rental properties so he can continue to build his portfolio there while I go pursuing my music and teach children. Yeah, so that's the personal side, all that together. Um, for the community, I've always reached out to the community. I mentioned a little um, earlier when I answered Julie's question. Um, I, my husband's village is in Isipik. That's where David and Susan Bacow come from. Um, and I visited there with my husband and saw that children as young as five, six were wor walking two hours to school early in the morning. And a lot of them don't have thongs. Uh, they do it rough. They wake up at four o'clock, they're cooking um, uh, taro or yam, starchy vegetable, a root vegetable on the fire by 4 a.m. And then by six, if it's raining, they're cutting banana leaves, putting it on their heads, and they're running to school two hours away, one and a half to two hours away, um, just for an education. And by the time they come back, it's five, six in the afternoon. They're so tired, but yet they have to help go fetch water for their mothers. And um, my heart went out to them. So I started a school out in the bush out in nowhere um, and got them to, um, I'm paying for a teacher out of my own pocket, my husband and I, so that she can teach these children and, and use the curriculum to teach the children to read and write in English up to about um, uh, level four or grade four. And then we can um, transfer them to the school that's one and a half to two hours away. Um, so the school has been running for eight years. We've had our challenges, um, but I would like to um, do that better and support community projects like that. Um, I've been on a few international stages just saying, you know, this, this is a good idea, but I need, I need help. Um, I would, and I usually pitch for organizations to give me a, a community building because they don't have electricity. Uh, so if we can get a community building, which is like a, a mini hub of education, uh, children can do online e-learning, they can have resources there um, and study in the afternoons, then they go home. The mommies and daddies and youth can use it in the evening, but have a community building that is a, is a, it's just a place of learning. Um, that's always been my dream. And um, I've, I know that with on passive, I can now breathe easy. I can, I can do this for my people and not just for the one setting, but I can replicate it. And yes. Just, just, just take it, make sure that children are learning, they're learning well in their locality without having to walk um, distances. Uh, 
Yeah, and and if, if I can use um, passive to um, build a community base from uh, a rural area up, then we have we can we can put a stop to uh, um, the urban migration that happens. We have a lot of people coming into towns and cities in Papua New Guinea. Um, looking for a good opportunity, and so if we can, if we can build up, have a prototype idea that builds the community in the villages and gets people um, educated enough. They're working on their land, they're selling their produce, and the money is coming to them in their locality. Um, I believe it will be something. It's. I know saying that it's. It is a big dream for a very small person like me. <laughs> but I've started a school, I've started a few schools, um, even in the islands of Papua New Guinea and I've seen the results. And my dream is to take that further. And I know that it's a work in progress. And now with On Passive, it's like a breath of fresh air that I can, it's like, yes, now I have, something and someone and, and a big whole lot of someones that would believe in a crazy dream like this. And I can. Absolutely. It's a possibility. And as keep saying, update your dreams. Your dreams can be bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, there's really honestly nothing that you can think of what you're doing that can't be done with own passive. It is going to make it a whole lot better. I love your heart. I love your passion for, education and old academy is another thing that you know you'll be able to just uh, teach all over with that you know but uh, uh great man johanna i can't tell you how how good it was listening to you and what a great job you did today thank you so much for coming unfortunately we're running out of time but uh i loved uh talking with you today and uh and so thank you so much for coming and sharing with us julie over to you Wrap it up for us, if you don't mind. Thank you, Milo. Johanna, that was so beautiful. I just love sitting here, uh, listening to you telling uh, to us about Papua New Guinea. Really appreciate what you are doing. And absolutely, Ash keeps saying, keep dreaming. Make your dream bigger. Dream bigger. So I really appreciate you spending time here with us. Um, I'd like to hear from you if you have any word of wisdoms to the people that are sitting on the fence or any last words that you wanted to share. Thank you, Julie. Um, for anyone that is sitting on the fence, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a careful person, but I would encourage you, if you're sitting on the fence, um, go do your own research look up the company and um, especially two things is um, check the uh, the owner, Ash, uh, Ash Mufara, um, sit in webinars where he's talking so that you can feel his heartbeat, uh, number one. Number two, um, get to understand the product. So these two things, the person and the product. And uh, I'm pretty sure by the time you get to the end of the person, you're sold on the person. And then when you look at the product, you can be sure that the product, anything on the internet is, uh, once it's launched, it stays there for a lifetime and you are guaranteed. So get off the fence and try something. You might be surprised. And I know you would be surprised. Yes, and then also you get into a good positive community, um, a community that supports you and, and believes in you as a person. So those three should be a seller. Thank you, Johanna. Really appreciate you being here. You tell us a story about the children in Papua New Guinea. Such a beautiful story. There you have it, everyone. It's Johanna Kilambe from Papua New Guinea. What a beautiful story. I hope after you watch this message, I hope what she shared with you today touch your heart. And if it does, mm -hmm. um, get back with the person who shared this message with you. Go to Julie and Milo show. Here you go. <laughs> go to julieandmilo.com. There are lots more story for you to 
listening to. And then, yes, Milo pointed out, I'm just going to put my finger away. Uh, join us on the Facebook group on Passive with a Heart. Um, there are a lot of information, heart to heart conversations, and sharing out there. As always, um, we do have lots of information there. Please check it out. Get back with the person who shared with, uh, this with you and take the action. Because once you take the action, it will change your life for good. It changed for the better. So thank you so much for watching today. As always, please stay well, stay healthy, and stay alive. Good night from Orange County, California. Good night. Thank you for having me on the show. Good night, everyone, and may you be blessed. Good night from Nashville, Tennessee. Listen to the stories of how they tell when they join.